Hello, Gregor Otero here. This video is brought to you by Bragg, organic apple cider vinegar. Mm. Does the bite feel good? Just gotta make sure I wash it down with something, cause yeah. I see, you can eat your throat. This tastes so good. Completely replace whiskey. Ah, okay. So we're gonna talk about the ecosystem of our solar system. How plants, stars, and comets all interact. It's all different stages of the same thing. So, I know going through all this is definitely gonna bring up the chicken or the egg question. So, it's something to think about metaphysically. But, let's start with comets, alright? Being comet elements, big thing right now, and see how there's an external aspect of it and a hidden aspect which we aren't really too focused on. Alright, so, you have our solar system, you have uh, the sun. Okay, then we have Mercury, we have Venus, then we have Earth, then we have Mars, that's a really big Mars. We have the asteroid belt, which is really a plant that's gotten blown up, that's all that's left, and then so on. Alright, well, each of these things produce magnetic fields. and. Uh, there's two other videos I did earlier tonight, and I realized I have only a 15 minute limit to upload from my phone, even though my account allows me to do like up to an hour. Um, so those will be uploaded tomorrow, and that's on Vortex Mathematics and Zero Point Energy. Really good, solid introduction. Um, lays out the first and second dimension. It's 45 minutes long. And so, one thing it talks about is um, overlapping fields of flow. And one thing is overlapping magnetic fields. And so each of these things produce magnetic fields. The sun producing the most powerful magnetic field, which encompasses the entire solar system. Okay? But each of these things produce magnetic fields. So does our moon, so does each asteroid and other little things, and potentially other solar systems intersecting with our, our solar system. And when you have overlapping magnetic fields, you get compression points, which is just the exact same thing as an electron. An electron is a compression point of a magnetic field. Um, and so when you have these overlapping fields, you get, well, like LNN, it's interesting how LNN's uh, orbital ring, something like this, shoom, and it goes out and in, um, goes right to about Mercury. And there's planet Honda, which seems to go right up to Jupiter. Um, so it, it lines up with the rings. And so the overlapping magnetic fields of the rings create these electron pathways, which are comets, macro-sized electrons, which we're going to look at one. We got a, it's a, it's a gravitic well. So we have a black hole, okay, and then expanding as a white hole. So we got out and in. And so the solar winds coming from the sun are always pointed at the black hole and the white hole is pointing away. So solar winds consist of protons, ionized hydrogen, the building blocks of life. And they go into the vortex, right? This is the mysterious part. Um, this is where I theorize. This is a theory, but the theory I feel very strongly about is the process of these building blocks go into the vortex. They get rearranged and organized into more complex things like water and gas. Um, and carbon, CO2, um, and they come out and they start to agglomerate out here, meaning it's expanding and also really cold, the water turns to ice, and gas and rock is all trapped in this comet as it's fed and grown as this comet reorganizes the matter into higher forms of life. Um, people say, well, where does the neutrons come from? And well, the uh, neutrons are, are balanced matter, so if you have polarized matter around it, you can make neutrons appear of thin air. Just like that. Um, and so, you know, anything can technically appear out of thin air, or thin space. Um, and uh, so, this also luminesces, um, and you have the tail. The tail is the white hole, the comet. You don't see the black hole facing the solar system. Now what happens when these two guys, or when you have two overlapping magnetic fields, or two comets, collide head-on. And so, 
the it'd be the uh, black holes sucking each other forward, boom, and slamming into each other. When you slam into each other, you have the material um, actually also slam into each other. Two ice balls colliding together. Well, two things happen. We got the vortex, the, the gravitic well, and the and the the material comet. The gravitic well, the black holes pass right through each other. The singularities pass right through. The question is, what happens when those singularities pass right through each other? Um, something really beautiful, I have a feeling. Um, but as they, as they pass through each other, and, and they start to drift away, the black holes want to suck each other back. So, and then they, they lock into place, and that gives you your double black hole magnetic field structure that radiates the white hole outwards, which looks just like our galaxy. You see the white hole, white spiral outwards, but you don't see the black hole sucking in. These comets would set up that structure. When the material comet slams into each other, um, everything would be vaporized from the intense um, heat, except for carbon, which is the one that has the highest melting point of all elements. Um, and the carbon would then fuse together to start to form diamond. So then here in the core, you'd have a diamond started to be formed. And a diamond happens to be a natural um, octahedron. Um, um, which is six points with eight sides. Um, carbon is also number six. It relates to the basic structure of space, a octahedron. And actually as a point like that, you'd have um, if it would be can I draw this right? The, the uh, triangle you'd have two triangles facing toward the poles. So you have three energy spiraling in um, together um, to each point. And this would then create the Merkaba field. You can't have it pointed upwards as Jose Argala says, because that Merkaba field wouldn't line up the way we observe in nature. Um, the tip, if there's a triangle, you have a tetrahedron pointing out, and you have two tetrahedrons pointing at the poles. Interesting thing about diamond is two major properties. One, it's the best thermal insulator or thermal conductor, and so it radiates heat perfectly. So as this electromagnetic energy compresses on the diamond, it compresses heat energy, it converts it into heat energy inside of it, and it radiates that heat energy perfectly to heat the planet. Um, at the same time, when diamonds are um, bombarded with high-intense electromagnetic radiation, it fluoresces. And so in my other video I talked about hollow earth theory a little bit, um, but the notion of a uh, planet. And so everything's formed in concentric rings, just like our solar system. And so you have the, you have the, uh, Oh, that's a bad doctor even. This guy right here, right there. And so the energy is getting pulled in. The vacuum is compression, so you have your, your polar ice caps, the energy radiating out, which your heat, the equator. Um, so it's not just the way it's tilted at the sun, it's affecting it. Um, but the there is a process where energy is converted into matter, the center of our crust, which happens to be the center of gravity, the overlapping centrifugal and centripetal force um, converts uh, electromagnetic energy into scalar energy. If you have two overlapping forms of scalar energy, it converts it back into matter. So somehow that process causes matter to form here, thus causing the Earth to expand and grow, which is now a proven scientific fact. Okay, So we have a crystalline core that fluoresces and provides light for the inner Earth, at the same time radiating heat out perfectly. Um, and then you have uh, a Earth planet. And so we got the five elements now we're going to go into. So we have the Earth, and Earth is now becoming a, uh, a water planet as the oceans grow, as the continents expand more, the oceans start to fill up, and we're also water beings. And so we are m moving into being a water planet. Then eventually we become a gas planet like Jupiter and Saturn as that next layer starts to form. We do have gas, and we have Earth, and we have water. So there's layers, but they, they develop and grow and become more defined um, to where the gas planet will expand dramatically outwards, and the rocky core 
is very small, it's known um, already um, about our solar system. And so the notion that as the sun is going to keep burning and burning and burning, and getting smaller and smaller, to where it can't have a gravitic hold on Jupiter anymore, because Jupiter is the biggest one of our planet, or, or our solar system, which will also keep growing, as all the planets do. And when the sun can't hold on to it anymore, gravitically, it will, Jupiter will leave our solar system. And when it leaves the solar system, here's the sun. The sun has a, a magnetosphere around it, with all these little plants being sheltered in this nursery. Okay, as it's moving around the galaxy, um, uh, all this energy is slamming into the sun. And so when the Jupiter then leaves, we'll be Jupiter right here, leaves the protective nursery of the magnetosphere, all of a sudden, boom, it starts to get bombarded by these energies spinning around our galaxy. Um, it's like you're in a car. All of a sudden you stick your hand out the window and boom, it wants to get pulled back. You're getting nailed by energy. That energy causes Jupiter and the gases around it to ignite. When the ignite starts to burn, which creates plasma. So we're moving from earth to water to gas, air, to plasma, fire. And when it starts to burn fire, it thus creates a much stronger magnetic field where Jupiter creates its own magnetosphere. Um, and the process of it interacting with overlapping magnetic fields, either be it of itself, which there, it, it does have its own overlapping magnetic field, uh, and then of other neighbors and other things that enter the magnetosphere, give birth to comets. And then when the comets collide, um, they can start to create their own planets, and thus the cycle continues. When the sun eventually burns out, it implodes to a singularity, a supernova, thus returning to spirit, thus completing a cycle of five elements moving through time. And so there, there's the gist of our solar system, the ecosystem, how things work together. And the, uh, uh, the comets, one thing to think about is an alignment, such as the comet Elenin. We have the Earth here, and Elenin's right here. And it's the golden ratio of distance between us and the Earth, which is something that's sometime happening around right now. Uh, my calculations is at 1900 hours UTC um, yesterday, the 26th. That was a while ago. I haven't seen any of the new JPL data. And if that JPL data is even right, it, it ties in more, I think, with while wow, Obama's doing a DEFCON 1 drill, 10 and 27. Um, and, well, when you have an alignment like this, you could say it's not the alignment of the comet itself. <laughs> Screw the friggin' um, the comet. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just like the illusion that we're focusing on the little ice ball when there's actually these gravitic wells or compression points which is really going to be an alignment of magnetic fields. Now, how when these magnetic fields line up, um, it allows for enhanced uh, forms of gravity to take place, either constructive or deconstructive. And with the golden ratio, um, when the golden ratio is perfectly in alignment, or this is the golden ratio of distance, um, you have pure constructive interference, as Dan Winter talks about. So there you go. There's the gist of our solar system, how it interacts. Uh, in a nutshell, I hope people like it. And uh, it doesn't matter if you like it. I think it's cool. So, ciao everybody. Love ya.